Yeah, what was your most craziest gig? Like the the number one gig that you will never forget. Oh man, um, this is a crazy story. Okay. Uh, um, I well, first of all, I told I told one very funny story about um, about a crazy gig I had on a a, a podcast I did with Sheree Reed. Um, I don't know if you've seen that, but you if you haven't, it's 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 hilarious. Um, so me and Sheree Reed sat down and talked about a bunch of stuff and we he he asked me about some crazy gigs because we spent a lot of time together playing um different gigs at one point and he knew some of my funny stories so um there's one very funny one and probably the, the funniest one is probably the one I told on Sheree's gig but so around 2000 maybe 2006 or 7 uh, I'm doing a cruise called Festival at Sea with Fred Hammond. Okay. And um, we get on the boat. We got on the boat, and there was a um, there was a storm chasing the boat. So, um, you know, we were supposed to. I don't know. You, you've been on cruises before, so you know when that kind of stuff happens, they start rerouting the destinations. Oh, so, God, like, you get on the cruise. So you get on a cruise. Okay, so you get on a cruise and say you're supposed to cruise to like Cozumel, you know what I'm saying, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, you may get on the boat, and if there's a hurricanes or anything like that, they may say, hey, we're not going to go to Cozumel. We're going to go in another direction. We're going to go to like Jamaica, or we're going to do Puerto Rico, or we're going to skip Cozumel and go straight to the Caribbean, somewhere else, or anything like that. So um, we get on the boat. And immediately, um, it seems like maybe they should have just canceled this cruise, but immediately we get on the boat and they're like, um, we're, th there's a storm chasing the boat. And so we're going to reroute the destinations. Um, and so we were on the cruise for four days and it was two nights of R and B, two nights of gospel. It's one act on gospel one act on R&B. So Fred is the gospel act and the R&B act is cameo. Okay. So um, Sugarfoot is playing with cameo. Um, Moffitt, Jonathan Moffitt is playing with, with cameo and they rerouted the boat. They changed the port destination where cameo was supposed to get on the boat at. Cause I think we were on the boat for the entire cruise. Cameo only wanted to get on they didn't get on wherever we got on that. So we got on in the state somewhere and um, they were supposed to get on at one of the islands. Maybe they were coming from somewhere else. I'm not really sure. Okay. But in any case, they changed where Cameo was supposed to get on the boat at and Sugarfoot and the guitar player didn't make the gig. Um, they, they, don't, they don't get on the gig. They don't get on the boat. So, uh, so I, this is the first night on the boat. First, first night on the boat, we pulled off, and uh, they're saying, "Hey, we rerouting the boat, and two of Cameo's band members are not gonna make it." So, man, literally, um, I'm on the cruise. I'm young, so it's about two, three o'clock in the morning. I'm hanging out, run, running the boat up and down, you know, mm -hmm. hanging out. And so I get back to my room at about two thirty, three o'clock in the morning. My phone in my cabin is ringing. So I answer the phone and it's Fred Hammond's brother, Ray. He gets on the phone and he's like, uh, man, where in the world have you been? I've been calling your phone. And I'm like, man, I, I've been out. We on the cruise. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm hitting the boat up. I'm I'm eating free. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Looking at the ladies. I'm chilling, you know? <laughs> so he was like, well, Cameo's drummer didn't make the boat. Yeah. And they need you to. They, they need you to play with them for two nights. So I'm like, um, man, okay. All right. Cameo. So I'm immediately starting to put together in my mind, like what this music is like. I'm just, while I'm on the phone, I'm starting to pro try to process what, like how I got to think. And so he's like, the, the manager's about to call you. I'm about to get off. I'm, I'm literally um, about to call him now. Tell him to call you. You're in the room. 
cool. So the manager calls me and says, hey, uh, Jonathan didn't make the boat. Um, and so we're going to play the gig, you know, anyway. And uh, we need you to play, 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 play the gig, play drums. Can you handle it? And I'm like, yeah, sure. So they're like, all right, well, um, meet us downstairs for sound check. And uh, we'll start going through the, you know, going through the music. So I'm saying, I, I, I said, uh, you, you want me to meet you downstairs for sound check? When? They're like, yeah, you can go downstairs now. <laughs> so I'm like, it's, it's 3 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> so they're like, yeah, yeah, go ahead, go down there now. So I go down to the, I go down to the to the theater, and sure enough, uh, one of the guys is there. Keyboard players there, bro. Keyboard players there programming his keyboard. They weren't running any Pro Tools. They weren't running no backing tracks, no clicks, no nothing. Everything that they got that's digital is being triggered manually. So a keyboard is there, load keyboard players there loading disc in this keyboard, like loading up samples, loading up sounds, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. I'm like, Jesus, man, you gotta you know there's an easier way, like <laughs> So, so then, so, so, so then, uh, so I, 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 their, their production manager or stage manager or something like that comes over there and he's like, yeah, you, you Calvin, you the drummer. I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay, cool, man. So he was like, uh, we're going to bring you Jonathan's kit. And they start to roll Jonathan's kit out on the deck and it's, classic Jonathan Moffat kit. It's mm -hmm. cymbals yeah. everywhere. <laughs> it's two two bass drums. It's a, a a line of rack toms in front of me, three floor toms. And so I'm just like my kit is right over there. Like <laughs> can we just take this one, roll it back off and then just roll mine over there and the guys looking at my kit and I mean, he's looking at Jonathan's kid and he's looking at my kid and he's like, dude, like, hey, you're a drummer, aren't you? Like, come on, man, I'm giving you a shot. This is what everybody wants. And it's like, I got a six piece kit with two snare drums and like five cymbals. This is like a 18 piece drum kit with like, and he's like, dude, like, come on. And I'm like, I'd mother, much rather just play my kit. So he's looking at me like I'm crazy. He's got no faith in me at this point. He's like, <laughs> It's like, man, this dude's about to blow it. So they roll my drums out. Keyboard player. Uh, I start checking my drums. I'm, I'm starting, like, getting tones and kind of putting my building my kit up. And the keyboard player sitting there, and he's, like, listening to me play. And he's like, yo, dude, like, oh, man, this, this is going to be interesting. It's like, interesting. yeah, man. So he's like, a, he's like, man, do you know any of this cameo stuff? And I'm like, I... I know whatever y'all I've ever heard on the radio. I know, you know, um, Candy. I know maybe one or two other songs, but you know, I know, I know, I know, I don't know y'all B-side records. I don't know enough to play y'all for the show. So he starts like talking me through the show. So he's telling me, um, what's his name? Black, uh, Blackman. Black, uh, is it Dave? That's not David Black. It's not Don Blackman. It's Ron, Ron Blackman, maybe the lead singer. Okay. I can't, whatever his first name is. So he's like, uh, yeah, man, you know, he's very, very meticulous about these, you know, about these drum parts, you know, so, oh. you know, he's going to, you know, that this one grew the first, I can't remember what the first song was, but it had this very, he was very particular about that. So I'm like, He's like, man, you know, you'll probably be cool as long as you remember those, you know, these little little patterns or whatever. So now it's just me and this guy and a sound engineer and a stage manager in the room. He's showing me a couple of things. He's like talking me through the gig. And of course, I'm just being me. So I'm just playing. And I start throwing. And he's like, yeah, man, yes, okay. man, do that, play that. It's like, bro, we'd love to hear it. Like, yes, like, yeah, man, yeah, we need that kind of energy, right? So 
he's like taking me through the songs, man, and all of this. Wait, that's the keyboard player, right? right? That this gave is the that okay? keyboard player. This oh, is the keyboard player. Okay. This is the keyboard player. Yeah. You see where this is going already. <laughs> so band starts coming in there. The band starts, you know, falling in at a certain point, and by whatever time, you know, Blackman comes in. It's probably six, seven thirty in the morning. He comes in with a glass of cognac, smoking a cigar. It's six thirty a.m. It's a cruise, so you know, hey, I ain't, you know, but I'm like, man, <laughs> you know. So he comes in and he starts uh, walking me through. He start, he starts at, he asks me, he says, "Hey, man, do you know any of you know the tunes or whatever?" And I said, "Well." My man over here was just taking me through some of the stuff, you know, he's taking me through the opening song. I said, I, I probably kind of know that much of that, like the first two or three songs. He told me how y'all get to him, you know, he's like, okay. So he says, uh, he says, all right, well, count them off and let's see how far we can get. Count the songs off, count them off. And we start playing and I'm cool. And the first minute I go for like the little just, color a little trinklet i throw a little splash tom in there and he's like hold stop wait a mf in a minute and then he lights into me bro man what the f are you doing man what are you playing man and, hi, and i'm and i'm like i'm like man i i'm just, my bad bro i was like i thought it was cool i mean I'm, i didn't i didn't know how tight you wanted i thought you like a little color and he was like, man, he asked me, he's like, you ever played with James Brown? And I was like, bro, look, look at me. I'm in my 20s. No, I haven't played with James Brown. So, man, he's, I mean, he's lighting me up, man. He's lighting me up. And so I said to him, I said, uh, I said, well, man, you know what? I said, I, I can play it as simple as you want it. I said, you know, I said, the keyboard player here was telling me it was cool to, you know, open up a little bit. And he said, who told you that? I said, he did. And the keyboard player is looking straight ahead like this. He wouldn't even look at me. He wouldn't look at black men. He's just looking ahead like, I don't know this guy. I've never seen him in my life. He never even like looked at my, looked my way, never even acknowledged like, this so. Is giving, this is giving drum line watery. <laughs> <laughs> so, so from there on, man, Blackman just kind of had it out for me. He's just kind of like, he's like, uh, He's like, yeah, man, you know, you gotta, you gotta play this, you gotta play this stuff tight, man. You gotta play it tight, and you gotta, you know, no, I don't want no, no chops or nothing. So, man, and then he started like, then the bass player started ganging up on me, like him and the bass player was taking turns. Mm -hmm. So the bass player is telling me, you know, we get to one of the ballads, we get to first, we get this, this sparkle, which is a cameo ballad, and so Blackman's looking at me and says, oh no, Aaron, the bass player looks at me and says. He says, when we start this song, man, he said, man, we, we, we go in. We said, we balls to the wall. So he says, and when I kick my foot in the air, you got to crash on the one. And I said, what? Mm. And, man, I, I can't say the way he said it to me after I asked him that. But, man, he gritted his teeth. <laughs> he was <just> like, <laughs> nigga, I said, when I kick my and you better crash the one. So I'm like. So they count the song off. One, two, three, three, dum, 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 boom, hey, spark, God. And he's giving the whole Verdine White thing. He's double time on the bass. Kick. You know what I'm saying? I got to catch this crash, man. It was, they had me in sound check until about 930 in the morning, bro. So uh, finally, I get to the, I get, I get to my room, bro. I'm beat. And um, the manager calls my room. And says, hey, so, um, okay, we, you know, we appreciate you, you know, stepping in for the gig for us. So uh, we need to talk some business. So, like, yeah, 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 we need, we definitely need to do that. <laughs> yeah. So she says, uh, so uh, we're thinking such and such amount of money. And I was like, and she's like, how do you feel about that? And I was like, I don't feel about that. <laughs> so I said, I said, listen. I said, I'm supposed to be on this boat for three days vacation and before I work. I'm supposed to be on this boat for three days before I even start working. I said, y'all just had me in the sound check. And I got my brains wrecked out, you know, 
Black man's giving me a hard time. Black man even in the sound check even got on the drums, bro. He's like, get off the drums. You can't play. So he wants to play one of the ballads, man. He's telling me, hey, I'm just like, I don't know if you're going to be able to play this ballad. And I'm like, bro, I'm like, it's not that complicated. Just, oh, you got to just tell me what the groove is. Tell me what the beat is. I mean, it's for, for drums on a cameo song, it's four and eight bars. Everything is in four and eight bar increments. So, but he was, he was lighting me up, man. And I, you know, it was just really about, and, and, and let me say this, it was really just about those guys spend so much time crafting their music. You can't make them believe somebody can grasp it in two or three hours. They spend a lifetime crafting it. You know what I'm saying? So I got it, whatever. But so I'm talking to the manager on the phone and she's like, you know, so what do you think about this number? I was like, I don't think about that number. It's not a number that ever came to my mind. So I'm like, this is what I'm thinking. And I think this is what's fair. I said, and so she's like, Oh, this is highway robbery. And I said, it's not highway robbery, ma'am. I'm like, come on. I know Jonathan. I, I know what y'all want him to be on this boat for two days. So, you know, um, that's a fraction of what he's gonna get. You know, I'm, I'm being way I'm being courteous, you know. So um, so she they finally called me back. They call, she said, I gotta call Blackman, I gotta let him know. Black, Black she says, you know, Blackman say we don't have no choice, so we're gonna pay you. So I said, all right, cool. So we talk to discuss the money. Well, I get down to the venue. I get down to the theater to play the gig. And they say all black, of course. You know, like that's all I have anyway. So I showed up with a pair of black, black jeans, and I've got like a black button-up shirt. Like with like a black button-up shirt, like from like Banana Republic or something. You know what I'm saying? And it's like a, it's like a, it's I almost look like I was going to like, uh, I mean, I look like I play gospel music. I don't look like I play for cameo. I like I play gospel music. And that's the black I had, you know? Yeah. And so, um, uh, the guy comes, uh, Aaron, bass player, walks past me and he goes, is that what you're wearing on stage? I was like, uh, yeah. He's like, wardrobe, wardrobe. Man, some lady comes zipping past me with this cart. <laughs> she comes flying past me with this cart. I don't know how this happened so fast, but the cart just flew. Like somebody pushed it and somebody was running behind it. His wardrobe comes, <clears throat> stops right here. He's flipping through there. Here, put this on. He grabs this leather vest. So I'm like, all right, fine. So I take the leather vest and I put it on. He looked at me. He's like, hey, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm putting the vest on. Hey, man, take the shirt off. Put the vest on. I said, man, look, this is where it's about to stop right here, bro. <laughs> I'm not going out here bare chest in front of you. I'm not, I'm not putting this leather vest on bare chested. You know, the cup is enough, bro. Like y'all, y'all didn't know why y'all worried about me. Like nobody's going to pay attention to me when you got that cup on with this, with these leather pants, bro. Give, give me a break. So oh, mm. that was, uh, and, and so that was probably one of my craziest gigs. It was a hard gig. Mm. The second night was a little bit easier, but man, Blackman gave me like a hard time. And they called me actually for like, I, play, I played like one other gig with them, but I don't think anybody told him that I was coming. Okay. And uh, they called me like one other time after that. Uh, it was a club in LA and man, he, he saw my face sitting on those drums when he walked in the venue and he was not excited. And so I knew for sure that they would never do something like they ain't never gonna call me again. Um, so that was one of my crazy stories, man. Um, and again, <laughs> again, from everything for like, from like wardrobe, but there's a lot that I'm leaving out because, you know, I just, I don't feel comfortable saying some of the stuff that was said, I, but, I get it. I get uh, it. but, you know, like I said, um, one of the things that I had just had to take into consideration um, was that guys like that, they spend lifetimes, you know, a lifetime. And, and it was enlightening, you know, for me, even from going there, I don't think I had, I don't think I had to start playing for Ronald yet. I hadn't started playing for Ronald yet. So w- once I, once I experienced that, it made me, it, it helped me to understand just how serious people take their music. You know what I'm saying? And when that's all they play, you know what I'm saying? When we, we're musicians, Guys like us, side men, we play different music every week. We play somebody else's music every week. And it's like, man, 
bro, show me your song. Let's go. Okay. Like, it's not that big of a deal. But these guys have spent their lives, they have, and, and it's all the music they play. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's, it's all the music they play. And they just take it that they hold it very serious. They hold it, it's sentimental. It's, it's everything to them. So, as much as I was kind of like, bro, just show me the eight bar groove and get it. I mean, to them, they spent, I mean, crafting songs, man. While I talked to, I can talk to Ernie Isley about how they crafted songs like Between the Sheets and Footsteps in the Dark or Who's That Lady. They were intentional about every single thing that's played on those records, man. You know, the multiple guitar parts with them going in, in opposite directions, you know what I'm saying? Rhythmically and melodically and core from, from progression standpoint, it's a lot that goes, it, it's they, those guys spend a lot of time, you know, um, and that's something that doesn't happen in gospel music. We're, we're detailed, mm -hmm. but we don't, you know what I'm saying? Like the layers, the, the when we have layers, a lot of times, some of it is doing the same thing. You know what I'm saying? It's just making it a little bit, it's, it's just making it fatter, you know what I'm saying? Building on the sound. But they, when they have layers, they all have parts. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So uh, for them, it's not a man. Just show it to me. It's like man, I. It took my. I spent days in the studio figuring out exactly what the drum part needed to do. And you're not going to diminish it to just say, just give it to me and give me your eight bar groove. So it's it's a little bit deep. It's a lot deeper than that for them. So I, I walked away with an understanding. It was crazy. You know what I'm saying? It was. Yeah. It was definitely weird, but that's one of my career. That's probably one of my craziest gigs. Yeah, you definitely you flowing into the next topic. That's some that's some prophetic <laughs> stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before I move that up, you know what's funny? Um, I got two things about that your experience with that. One, I, it just hit me. I, the next time somebody say the the price is highway robbery, I just thought of something. Just tell them, don't worry, we avoiding tolls. <laughs> <laughs> we're avoiding toes no worry, yeah <laughs> yeah the, the the vest now i can't unsee. i can't unsee sugar foot on drumio oh yeah <laughs> that's oh yeah that's his vibe all day that's 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 jonathan's vibe all day he dressed like that going to starbucks <laughs> Yeah. Jonathan, when you going? It's it's nine thirty. You got a gig this morning. You got on the you got on ripped jeans and boots, <laughs> and you oil, oiled up with a vest on. You got a gig? Nah, I'm going to get some coffee. <laughs> that's how that's how he trash. That's I mean, he's a he's, bro. He's the he's a rock star drummer. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 how he dresses. And it's a for certain people. That's just that's they they look for that. Like yeah, I saw you know some, what I'm saying. I saw some crazy outfits at Nam one time. <laughs> yeah yes man i mean those rock guys man they i mean they step out the house even i mean ernie and ronald isley you know what i'm saying you don't catch you don't catch ronald out in no you know no jeans you know you say he's mr biggs 24 hours a day yeah. you know what i'm saying yep. he versace shades you know he might if he if he relaxed he might have on a two-piece walking suit or something you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. you know but you're not gonna catch him out there you know no, that's that's who he is, and you know, artistry. They there's a very thin line between personality and artistry for those guys. You know what I'm saying? Some of them, yeah. it it just crosses over. So, yeah, that's yeah. I, I'm learning that the hard way when it comes to uh, even with on the social media, where yeah. like I, if I'm, and I, I I'm not I'm not like I, I still don't like think this way, but I am noticing on social media like some stuff changing like on the fact that like i used to play on uh old it was one of my first drum sets and then i get a certain amount of subscribers and then i'm getting calls like hey you can't be seen on camera with this no more yes yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's i mean you know it comes with it man you know yep. it's what comes with it yeah yep. it's like you know you get an nba contract i mean Bro, Kawhi Leonard got to be the only guy in the NBA driving the Chevy anything. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. and it's just like nobody don't do that no more, man. It's like, nah, bro. <laughs> you know, and he got he got he got a he got a whip too, but he's still driving like his Tahoe, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. 
That's crazy. It's like, but and he ain't even driving like what well, he got the one he been had from college. <laughs> That's crazy. That's nice. Off. <laughs> yeah, 